I'm very happy to have this chance to speak about my history of the company and history of the uh, internet media information systems. Actually, I started business from 1991. I believe one, uh, my company is one of the oldest companies in this industry. Talk with Microsoft for bundling our DBM Tech product, which is a plugin for Premiere and 3D Max at the time. Uh, unfortunately, I proposed to Microsoft to pay $100 per copy for bundling this, and Microsoft said simply no, they expect to be charged. And that, that's my big mistake to give, not giving them the opportunity of have a win. Anyway, uh, we have been worked many things about MPEG. One, two, four, and now we are going to the practice area. I would like to point out several important things about what we have done during the past 10 years and what will happen within several years. And I'm going to tell you about the story about Korea and what my company is doing using current information infrastructures. There are about four major technologies happen in this industry. The first one is uh, internet speed increased very rapidly from year 2000. And second one is the compression technology, and we have one to four, and now we're going VC1 and S.264. The third one is uh, virtual reality technologies using rapid uh, GPU and CPU power style, enabling us to make a very uh, realistic virtual environment, creating a second life of virtual reality systems. The first one is we are working for Wi-Fi to make uh, many people doing video streaming from any place in the world. So if you look at some short history during the uh, past seven years, which is a uh, very interesting event that we can find, I call this kind of uh, eruption, this uh, millennium uh, revolution or uh, eruption of information system we, we got right now. Actually, in Korea from 1999, and uh, actually it was really happened from year 2000 that we have a uh, very fast internet infrastructure. Nobody expects such a big jump during the past seven years, but so far from the data from OECD, we got information that more than 30 megabits internet is available in many major countries available right now. So I would say this is a, a year 2000 starting point. This is kind of millennium happenings, millennium present to, uh, to us. Uh, if you look at the compression technology, actually MPEG-1 standard came out from 1991, but available uh, encoders, decoders, and softwares are really happened from year 1999 when Microsoft announced the internet standard MPEG-1 and MPEG-4. So we have a DBX format, we have a lot of softwares and hardware which can do video on the internet. At the same time, we have a high-speed wideband internet. Uh, so that, that speed of uh, 1 megabps of D1 port video was available from, I would say, year 2000. So another thing, the uh, speed graphics actually happened from year 2000 again. So from this moment, everybody expecting very nice virtual reality graphics from PC platform, not from central graphics uh, uh, server anymore. So that time, uh, Korea has a high speed internet. Eventually, we have an online 3D virtual game in countries in the world. That's why we are many famous companies in our country working for online games, and everybody enjoys this. Excuse me. Anyway, I would say one more time, year 2000 is the origin year. We have a millennium eruption of 3D virtual reality and impact video streams. Now, uh, in country, especially in Seoul and all the places we can, we can be streaming about one megabit video from any place uh, using the uh, wide road technology from, from Korea, uh, Samsung, and uh, uh, government uh, driving direction, which is a part of a wide technology. And also, we have a uh, HSP uh, DK technology, which enabling us using high speed internet through telephone technologies. So uh, this kind of uh, technology enabling us to make uh, all broadcasting high quality video from any place, at least in Korea, I believe every country will happen this one very quickly. So it is very interesting for us to see how the content media is happening after we have such kind of uh, uh, IT hosting uh, technologies. 
The first one I want to say is there are a lot of different ways of delivering content. The second one is the uh, uh, number of internet users are increasing very rapidly in all over the world. And also the volume of content business is increasing rapidly. There are a lot of movie, films, music, sound, and games are, are delivering not through uh, air channels or satellite channels only, but also we are delivering through internet. A lot of people can enjoy many contents uh, through different media, which enabling us to uh, make more people in the internet. This chart is showing about 500 million people from China we have our internet connections. Uh, if you look at the, all over the world, we can expect a lot of people are connecting and the business volume of uh, content are growing rapidly. So the, 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 all this happening actually happened from year 2000. And so the, uh, the data about uh, market volume, uh, we have about $7 billion right now we have. So at the same time, it comes from year 2000, I, I would say this is a kind of millennium eruption which we have right now. So the first of this the content business has some trend. The first one we have to look at is the shift of content delivery architecture of the industry. The second one is the, is the content marketplace moving uh, uh, coming from every place. And also there is some trend for web and content market trend. I would like to point out one more time about this. The power shift content business actually start from uh, satellite uh, or the movie theaters, uh, all the big guys was the uh, media market uh, uh, governor. And they have a lot of uh, business uh, risk to put a lot of money to create good content and delivering this one through several limited channels of the uh, market. So it, the, this market is shared by air company, satellite or TV. What it happened after we have internet speed, the content owners now delivering all the content through internet distribution channels. So they, they, there are a lot of uh, ways of delivering content with a very limited uh, uh, risk uh, and have a lot of different methods of the business. The content market, not solely distributed by big guys, but everybody can expect they can make a small market by themselves. Anyway, the, the content marketplace, uh, the content provider now has a small risk to create the content in various different way of market that they can have. And also the users can select uh, many different choice, low cost, high quality of content they can get from internet in infrastructure. That's what we have, the market of content. And then eventually the open architecture of web or other uh, systems enabling user to providing the content directly. So this market is really happening right now with uh, user content creation uh, delivery system by Denson. So the trend is all the homepage now expand the information by using blog systems. So the homepage owner don't have to create everything by Denson, but every people coming to their, create their own blog. It is expanding a lot of information automatically by participating all the users. So the Web 2.0 enabling people to participate to co-own the information system. And a lot of text and videos, text and graphics are moving to uh, digital videos, more, more like the 3D graphics coming out for showing virtual reality world. Uh, eventually, all the information infrastructure we are creating becoming open shared for all and also user participate uh, structures. The next one is uh, some uh, business I'm, I'm working right now and together with some companies uh, in this industry. So uh, the first one I want to point out is uh, as soon as we have a lot of channels of internet or a lot of broadcasting requests from the market, we have to provide some way how they create more channels, more content to this, this open market. The second one is the people want to have broadcasting capabilities, so we have to provide some way how they create very nice content and very nice broadcast channels by themselves. The third one is they, the people in the home or other, other industry people has to use this kind of infrastructure to create their content by themselves to enjoy their life, to, to change their styles. 
The first one is education market. Many people are working for e-learning, distance learning, but still we are using a simple uh, way of teaching. But we can use some virtual reality technology and also the distance learning using this in internet infrastructure to enabling new uh, paradigm of education structures. I'm going to show you some simple example how we are working in Korea, how working we are in Asia especially. And the tour, the visiting many places. Also, there are too many places to show, but we have a limitation of traveling everywhere, everywhere, bring their body to see, to visit every place is actually very difficult to see. But now we can use virtual reality technology to show many places by using computer or network. The last one I would like to show is the cyber sports, which uh, make you healthy exercising device with very interesting environment. So far, when you visit a health club or whatever, they need a lot of effort to exercise. But if you combine some technology in this industry, they can enjoy a lot of things for improving their lifestyle of the health uh, uh, the first area I'm working actually is um, the is working is the increasing demand of internet TV channels. If you try to make a channel for internet TV, which is a PC-based TV channel, if you try to make a 24 hours broadcast from your website, there is a lot of requesting technology necessary. Especially the studio, they need they need an automation system, they need a typing system, and so on. But actually, in this technology area. If you make a very easy to use and simple platform by using soft and PC, we can realize very nice virtual studio which enabling us to create many different types of studios from small space. Another technology we need for broadcasting is 24 hours playout systems, which we can make a schedule from any video. They make a stream from their computer to internet, so every people can see their own channels from any video or internet. So we are trying to make a simple solutions for studio creation and also automation product, which is enabling any camera they can connect so they can make 24 hours channels by using their own internet address. So what I'm trying to build uh, one of the system which I'm working on is uh, I found uh, uh, many studios who invest about a million dollars to create the broadcasting channels. But actually what they're really doing is one or two actors are working in studio. So I, I, I found uh, we can make a very simple studio like this. Two machines working for studio and, and also the automation. The other two machines working for editing and content creation. So this, this kind of small UCC station enabling every people to create their own channels by themselves without any investing big money of the device and lightings. So this device has uh, uh, all the lightings on the frame all the cameras they can attach there, audios, uh, switches, mixers, virtual studios, playout servers, editing stations, and titlings, recordings, and finally they can do streaming over the internet. So once they have small space, they can make a 24 hours broadcasting quality video coming out from their home or any office places. Mr. Kim, you need to sum up. Okay, so the, uh, another thing is that uh, we have 100,000 studios in, uh, in Asia who has a uh, karaoke studio. So we are trying to build this studio as a real broadcasting studio so they can create their own videos or entertainment things. Uh, one important thing is e-learning. We, we have to provide some way how to uh, record video so they can, they can create their own video from